Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus Horus Heresy painting tutorial, and today we are painting Constantin Valdor. Yes, look at him. Isn't he cool? He's coming apart in my hands, but that's okay. That's exactly what we want him to do, because he has been built in a sub-assembly. Yes. So what we have is we have this bit of rock here, which now won't come off. There we go. We have this bit of rock, like that. We have Valdor himself, and we have his scenic base. Now, we are going to just be focusing on him. Then we're going to do the base, and then we can just slot it all back together. Nice and simple, like that, and it'll look awesome. As you may have experienced from all of our previous Horus Heresy character series models, such as Sanguinius, the Lion, and Horus himself. So, without further ado, we're going to jump in and start painting him in just a moment. The whole miniature has been primed in grey here, and, well, all that's left to do is to grab our paints, grab our brushes, and then get started. So the place we're going to start on Constantin Valdor is on Constantin Valdor, funnily enough. And we're going to start off by painting in all of his armour. Now, it is gold, obviously, but we're also going to be painting in the Guardian Spear. It has a name, can't remember what it is right now. Um, but we're not going to be doing the gold on his cloak just yet, because we've got obviously all of that red to paint in, but we're going to want to do that a little bit later. So, with that in mind, we're going to take some thinned down Retributor armour I'm going to pick a place to start, and I'm just going to start down here by the foot. I'm just going to start painting this Retributor armor all over all of his other gold details. Now, there are rather a lot of gold details, as I'm sure you can imagine, on Constantin Valdor. So do just check out the product photography on the Forge World website for any assistance with this, or alternatively, and just wait until the next clip, of course. We'll be going around the model. But we're just going to get this all over. Now, it might take a couple of thin coats here and there. We want a nice strong gold colour here. So just take your time, work your way up the model. If you're doing it the same as I, well, you might be a bit braver and you've just gone whole hog straight on to his chest, for example. Either way, just make sure you get this gold all over all of his armor and all over that guardian spear as well. So with that done, you should have a Constantin Valdor that looks somewhat like this. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to shade all of that gold. And the colour we're going to make is roughly two parts Fire Slayer Flesh to one part Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss with one part Contrast Medium just thrown in there to make it flow a little bit better off the brush. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to start painting it all over. Now, the two together is going to create a very interesting warm brown shade all over with that air uh, of glossiness in there, which is exactly what we want. Now, we mostly just trying to get this in the recesses. So that's what we're trying to get nice and shaded for when we do our next step. So it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit patchy on the flat surfaces, because we are going to be going back over it. But we don't want to drown it either, so just be very careful with how much you're putting on. Just make sure that you're really working it into all those recesses and all those details around the model. As you can see, it's already got this really lovely sort of, well, Fire Slayer fleshy Cryptek Armour Shady Gloss. <laughs> Glossy finish to it. Just like this. So with that done, Constantin Valdor is beautifully shaded. He's still got that nice little glossy finish to him and he looks awesome. 
but he is not going to remain this color. No, he's going to be brightened right back up. Now, we are going to be once again returning to Retributor Armor, and we're going to be using this on all of the kind of flat open panels. We don't need to worry about any kind of the fine detail. We just want to get this all over these fine panels, just like this. We're avoiding any of the recesses and anywhere where that shade is really settled. So for example, just there on the leg, you can see that shade just in there. We're just going to avoid that. We can just take it up onto the, the lion's mane detail just there a little bit. Now don't worry too much about getting this on the really fine detail. We are going to be doing an edge highlight in just a moment. That's going to pick up a lot of that. This is really just for focusing on the larger, larger open parts of the miniature. Just kind of returning that shine to the model. So with that done, our gold is now nice and bright again. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add a highlight. Now the color we're gonna make is a roughly two part Stormhost Silver to one part Retributor Armor. And we're just gonna take this on our brush and we're just gonna start highlighting all of the edges. Just like this. And this is where we're gonna start picking out all those extra little details that we didn't do with the Retributor Armor. It's all the little filigree and dilt it, tiny details. You just wanna start picking them out with this mixture. So with that done, our armor is now finished, as is the casing of the Guardian Spear. Looks pretty awesome. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to all of his red details. Now this is gonna include his cloaks, and it's also gonna include this shoulder pad and this shoulder pad up here. And the color we're gonna be making is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and blood angels red. We're gonna be doing two coats of this because we want this to be a nice strong red but because it's such a large area, we want to basically do two coats. So we get a nice, very, very strong color of Blood Angels Red. So we're just going to start up here by the recess. I'm just going to start getting this all over. Now, if we go straight from the pot with the Blood Angels Red, it'll end up being too, too dark. And it's a lot harder to control that way as well. So we're using that contrast medium to just make the flow of the paint a little bit easier to use but also just so we have a little bit more of a control over what the final color is gonna look like. Now you don't need to worry about the details on the back here. You can just get this all over. Just like I'm doing here. And as I said, we're gonna do two coats of this. So let it dry. After you've done the first, and then we'll do it again, straight after. So we've applied two coats of that one-to-one -one mix of Blood Angels Red and Contrast Medium, and we are still currently waiting for it to dry. So whilst we do that, we're gonna take some Black Templar. We're gonna use that to paint in all of our black details, excluding this kind of fur here, this head up here, but otherwise, we're gonna be using the Black Templar as it is. So we're gonna be picking out all of the areas such as the soft joints in his armor, right just down there. We're gonna be using it to pick out this Cyberhawk type thing just here and any other areas that we want to be black. Just like that. 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add some shading to the cloaks and to the tabard type area. And the colour we're going to be using for this is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. Now, we are just going to get this all over. I know it seems a bit weird because we did the two layers of Blood Angels Red, but the two layers of Blood Angels Red was just to really make sure that when we do this bit here, we still get this nice strong red going over the top. It adds a lot of impact to this wildwood mix. So with that done, we've now got a really, really nice, deep, rich red for all of our clothing. So it's still a little bit wet just down there in the darkest recesses, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focusing on the kind of upper areas of the cloak at the moment. And by the time we get to them, they'll be dry anyway. But of course, if you want to, you can just leave and make sure that it's 100% dry. I'm just doing this for the sake of speed. Now, the color that we're gonna be using is Mephiston Red. And what we're gonna be doing here now is going to be picking out, as I said, all those raised areas with the Mephiston Red. Basically avoiding darkest recesses of the cloak. Just like this. So with that done, you should now have some cloaks that look somewhat like this, which is pretty cool. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some highlights to it. And the first one we're gonna use is Evil Sun Scarlet. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick out the kind of pinnacle of each of our folds. Just like this. Quite a wide highlight at the moment because we've got a much narrower one to do after this. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Fire Dragon Bright and we're going to apply this along the edges. of the folds in the cloaks. Just like that. And so with that done, just to blend it all together, what we're gonna do is gonna make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood to one part blood angels red, 611. And we're gonna be doing this all over the top of all of these details. And we just wanna very carefully now, because we don't wanna overload them too much. This is just gonna to pull together all of those reds and browns. To 
make it all feel part of the same scene. So with that done, just whilst we wait for that to dry, what we're going to do is going to take some wild wood. And we're going to use this to paint in all of the little ropes. So we've got one going around here. Like so. We've got this one just here. It goes all the way around. And we've got the one in his right hand. And so with that wild wood applied, the back is now dry. So what we're going to do is going to use some thinned down retributor armor. I'm going to paint this over the top of the eagle device on the cloak. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna add a little shading to this cloak. Now it is a little bit different to the rest of him. It's not a nice warm gold, it is a little bit more worn. So the color we're gonna be making is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and basilicanum gray. And we're just gonna get this all over these details here on the back, just like this. I've got actually a little, little too much on my brush. So in just a second, once I've spaced it out everywhere I want it to be up on this section. I'm just going to clean the brush off and lift off some of that excess. I don't want, we can just move it about like this. Just like that. Just wash the brush quickly. And then just lift off some of that silicone gray around there. Where I don't want it. Just like that. And then we're also gonna apply this just over here on this little device as well. like that. And then what we're also going to do, I'm just going to take a little bit of this and around the kind of working mechanical areas of the guardian spear up here, we're just going to add a little bit of this to just make it appear a little bit more ornate than the rest of him. Just try and keep it to the panels. So we've already done all those lovely highlights on it. Still sticking with the Basilicanum Grey just for the moment, but this time on its own, no contrast medium. What we're going to do is we're going to use this Basilicanum Grey to colour in the mane of the beastie on his shoulder. Just there, like that. I 
And with that done, we're then going to take some ultramarines blue. I'm going to paint this over the fur coming down here. Now don't worry, this is going to be much darker than this blue. This is going to act as our little pre-shade here. So we'll be adding some black over it in just a moment. And whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're then going to do is going to take some Gilliman flesh. I'm going to paint this all over Valdor's head, all over his face. And so with that done, still continuing with this base coat train that we're on, what we're gonna do is gonna create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. We're gonna use this over the top of all of the paper details. So for example, just there like that. So we've got those large kind of purity seals. Got this one here. What we're also going to do is we're going to use it over the flesh of the beastie's face. And so with that done, we're now going to take two colours, Skeleton Horde and Wildwood. I'm going to be using those on the horns and on the claws just down here. And what we do is we take some Skeleton Horde first. I'll just demonstrate here on this horn. It's a little too much. And what we're going to do is just going to paint the Skeleton Horde all over, like so. And then we wash the brush, grab the wildwood, and whilst it's still wet, about halfway along, we just add the wildwood on. Like that. Same on the inside. Wash the brush, grab a little bit more skeleton hoard, and just where the two colours meet, just want to kind of blend the two together. Like so. And we want to do this on both the horns and those claws. We've just got a little blob of it there on the back of that ear, which we don't want. There we go, like that. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to paint this all over our silver details. So this is going to include this baton here that he's holding. I'm not sure what it is. It just looks baton-y to me. Rod of Command or something. Really good book he couldn't put down. <laughs> like that. It's going to include these kind of pipes going around his tummy. Like so. And it's also going to include areas such as the blade and mechanical areas on the weapon.
So with that done, now what we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top of our Ultramarines blue. So with that black Templar applied, what I've also done is I've applied it to his hair and to some of the pipes coming into his face. So what we're just going to do quickly is take some flesh terrors red. I'm going to use this on this last remaining pipe just here. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. We're going to use this in a couple of different places. Now, firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to colour in the eyes on our beastie. Like that, including the kind of bottom eyelid. We're also going to use this black Templar over the flat of the blade. So I'm going to basically pick a place to start. I'm going to start right up here. What we want to do is just around there where it starts to curve off into the sharp cutting edge. That's where we want this to stop. I'm going to use this black Templar all over the flat though otherwise. And so with that black Templar applied, we then take a little bit of wildwood and just over the top of its kind of head, you see you've got the slightly harder bit just around there. We basically want to colour that in with the straight wildwood from the pot. Like that. No messing around with contrast medium here. Just like that. And with that now done, we take some skeleton horde. And we apply this over the beastie's teeth. And with that now done, it's time to add a shade. Now the shade we're gonna be using is Griff Charger Grey. We're gonna be using this over all of his silver details. So for example, just there on that baton of some description <laughs> and across that silver blade as well and the pipes around his tummy, and any of the other silver details that you may or may not have. So with that Griff Charger Grey applied, Constantin Valdor is now at what I would call a war hymns the battle ready. He's not really. It would be ludicrous to suggest such a thing. But that's where we're at. All of his base coats are on and all of his shades are done. So it is now time to start taking all these details to the next level. Now, the place we're going to work on first is his face. And the colour we're going to be using is Magos Purple. And what we want to do is just take a small amount of this Magos Purple on our brush. And basically, along the sides of his head... We want to add in some of this Magnus purple, just like this, in a kind of semicircle, like that. So the skin is a little bit inflamed, according to the box art. So I'm just going to start by doing it like that, and we want to do the same thing on the other side as well. Coming up to where that plug is, like so. What we also want to do is use a tiny amount of Magos Purple in the recesses. So just a little bit just there. 
like that a little bit around his brows with that magos purple applied we then take a tiny amount of volupus pink not very much at all looking like that so like a little pin pricks worth and we just want to add this in the deepest recess just here Like that. I'm going to wash the brush and just make sure it's not too strong a colour. So with a clean brush, just go in there and smooth it out just a little bit. Like that. We also want to just take a tiny, tiny amount of the lupus pink. We want to use this around his bottom lip. And next up. We're going to take some black templar i'm going to use this on his bottom eyelids and over the top of his eyeballs so you just want to color in the eyeball and then just make sure you hit that bottom eyelid as well like that but what we also can do if you're feeling up to it is you can take a little bit of that on your brush and then just on this side of his head Draw in an Imperial Eagle tattoo. So I'm just going to do this by taking, drawing a little line. You don't want very much on your brush here as you do this. So you just want to draw a little, as I said, a little line just there. And then next to it, leaving a little gap in the middle, you want to draw another line. Like so. And then oh, we drop the brush. <laughs> then what we do, is take a tiny little bit, and we're just going to draw out the wings. the body by doing lots of little lines just like that and so with that done we then want to take a tiny tiny dot of screaming skull you want to apply this in each corner of his eyeball like that and so with those eyes now done what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down blade one flesh i'm going to use this to highlight the skin So with that done, the face is finished. So what we can do is we can move on. And well, we're gonna move on to the hair and consequently, most of the black details. Now the color we're gonna be using is Dawnstone. And what we wanna do is we just wanna pick out all the strands of hair just up here. Just like that. And then we're gonna highlight all of our black details apart from this area just here. Because we did that with the blue, we're gonna have that as a different highlight. So we're just gonna start over here on the bird. So with that done, what we're now gonna do 
Skip doing the spot highlight just for a moment because it's going to be the same across both styles of black. Because what we are going to be doing is we're going to be using some rust grey here. I'm going to be using this to highlight the area that we did with the ultramarines blue first. So all this fur just here. Just like this. And so with that rust gray applied, we then take some Fenrisian gray. And we're gonna use this as the spot highlight across all of our blacks. So for example, just here on the fur, just wanna pick out the sharpest points like this, just to add a little bit of variation here and there. Like that sort of thing. Similarly, over here on the eagle. So with that done, all of the black details are now finished. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna move on to the silver. And the colour we're going to be using first for this is Iron Hand Steel. And we're going to be using it in a couple of different ways. So firstly, what we want to do up here on the on the blade is we want to basically re-layer it over the majority of it, but not all of it. We want that kind of slightly different effect. So we want to basically, along this cutting edge, paint the Iron Hand Steel around about there, like that. Then we just want to turn it into an edge highlight towards the end. And that sort of thing. Similarly, on the rest of the details, we're just gonna add a little edge highlight, just like that. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is gonna take some Stormhost Silver. I'm gonna use this to pick out the cutting edge of the blade, just there like that. We want the rest of the metallics to kind of stay as they are. So we're going to have a kind of slightly grittier feel. What we're also gonna do with the Stormhost Silver, however, is we're just gonna hunt around for all the little gems. So for example, there's one just there. There's one just there on the back as well and they're kind of scattered around the miniature, as is befitting of all Custodes miniatures. <laughs> so that Stormhost Silver applied, we're then going to take some Karak Stone. I'm going to use this to highlight the strands of all the rope. And with that now done, we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. We're going to use this to highlight all of our parchment, but also our beastie's skin on his shoulder pad. So with that pallid witch flesh applied to all those parchment and the beastie skin details, what we're now gonna do is gonna take some Corax white and we're gonna use this to highlight the hair.
So with that done, we're then gonna take some Rune Lord Brass. I'm gonna use this to highlight our cloak details. So with that done, we've got a very subtle highlight on there, but it's absolutely perfect for what we want. So the cloak is now finished. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some Screaming Skull now. I'm gonna use this to highlight the horns and the teeth and the claws. Just like this. So with those horns and things all highlighted, all that's left to do is to pick out all of those gems with some Achillean green. So we just wanna take that on our brush, just very carefully now. Just start picking out all those gems. So with that Achillean green applied, what we then do is take a little bit of Ultramarine's blue. I'm just gonna add this in the top left corner of each of our gems. Just add a little bit of extra shade and shadow to the gems. Just like this. And with that done, we then want to use some Baharoth blue to add a little highlight to the bottom right corner of each of our gems. Like this. And then lastly, but by no means leastly, we want to take a small dot of Corax white and just drop that in the top left corner of each gem. With those gems complete, Constantin Valdor, the man himself, is now finished. He looks awesome, but there is now, of course, the question of the base and this bit of rock and the large scenic base here as well to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with his base and then we'll move on to the big one. But fundamentally, the techniques are all gonna be more or less the same on here as they are going to be on the big base as well. So the colour we're going to start with is Agaros Dunes and we're basically just going to layer this over the entire of the base. Just like this. The only things we're going to avoid are this kind of little bit of broken rock just here, the shoulder pad and these like struts just there. We're going to avoid those just for now, but for the rest of it, we just want to get this Agaros dunes all over, just like I'm doing here. Really make sure you work it into the recesses and the details. We want a nice strong coat of this Agaros dunes all over the base.
I should also say we don't need to worry about this smooth section just here because it's the same as the smooth section on the back of this bad boy. It's just purely decorative that bit. So with that Agaros Dunes applied, what we're now going to do is going to, well, add a load of darkness and dirt and battle damage to him. And well, the two colours we're going to be using for this are Basilicanum Grey and Wildwood. Now I've got them on my palette here because, well, I don't want to go back to the pots very often. And well, what we're going to do is we're just going to very sporadically use the colours in between each other. But we're not going to wash the brush as we do it because we're just going to mix them on the brush and on the model at the same time. So starting with Wildwood, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of this Wildwood around here like that. Nice and slapdash. Gonna go to the palette, grab some Basilicanum Grey and add that as well. Like that. Leaving a bit of that wild Agaros Dunes. That we applied previously. Like that. Can go back to the palette, grab some Wildwood. Add it in here. Like so. Grab some Basilicanum Grey. Add it in there. that with all that dirt and horribleness applied what we're then going to do is we're going to take some basilicanum gray we're going to apply this to these areas just here to these little pylons And so with that done, we're then going to take some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to apply this over the Fallen Stone just here. So with that done, what we're going to do we're going to pop it to one side just for now and we're going to let him dry and now what we're going to do is we're going to gather up this base and we're going to do effectively the same sort of thing I mean we're going to go a little bit darker here so we're going to start with Agaros Dunes but we're mostly keeping this towards the top up here around all this kind of sculpted area and the kind of sort of destruction of the rock just around here so for example just around here on these rocks just there with the Agaros jeans. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to use this to paint in the pylon just here. Like that. Just finish this section off very quickly.
And what we're also going to do with this is we're going to use this to paint in the panels up here. Now, we're going to try our best to avoid the kind of detailed work, the frescoes and things. Basically, we want to paint in the, the structure, as it were. And so with that Basilicanum Grey applied, we're then going to take that Dark Angels Green. And we're going to apply this all over the frescoes. And so with that Dark Angels green applied, we're then going to take two colours, Wildwood and Black Templar. I'm going to use this to paint in all of this kind of area just around here. And we're also going to use this to paint in this bit of rock. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be alternating once again. And we're just going to grab that Wildwood. I'm going to start there. I'm going to get this all over. Like that, just in that little section. Grab the Black Templar. You just start mixing the two on the model. So with that done, our Valdor is now looking somewhat like this, if we put it all together. And well, we are gonna keep it all together just for the moment. It's still loose, but this is because for this next step, we need to be able to see kind of what that kind of transition looks like up from this very dark stone down here through to the brownie a bit and up to this kind of area at the top. So the next bit we are gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part Black Templar. This is basically our kind of final weathering stage and also a bit of a shade that we're going to add to, well, anywhere that we want to kind of darken down and make a little bit more part of the scene. So for example, around here on this large flat open area, what I want to do is I want to start adding this little shade, just like this. over the top of our grubby agros dunes. Like that, as you can see, it just kind of really blends it right in. But what we're gonna do, just add a little bit more just around here. And then what we do is we wash the brush and just in little areas, we're just gonna lift off some of that just to create some slightly different patches in the shading. With a clean brush. Almost like a wet blend in a way. Like that, and you can see that floor there now looks suitably grubby and horrible. Which is just what we want for a war torn battlefield in the 31st millennium. And a little bit of this down around there. A little bit up here. Wash the brush. Move it around a bit. Like that. 
what you can't quite see is that on the black back of the kind of building here, I've actually added black Templar over the top of that gray on the kind of panels where the green sort of designs are. So if we just deconstruct Mr. Valdor just for a moment, like that, you can see now how it all kind of comes together. We can use this kind of mix as well. So just pick up any little areas that we might have missed. Add a little bit of shading. Blend it out a little bit. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a very gentle dry brush over the entire of the base. The color we're gonna be doing that with is Karak Stone. And all we wanna do, as I said, is we just be nice and gentle running it back and forth. Over the top. So with that Karak stone dry brush applied to the base, all of our stonework and the green is now finished. So all that remains to do is to paint in the shoulder pad and the helmet down here. Now you can paint them any legion colors that you want, but I'm gonna go for word bearers. And to do this, what we're gonna do is gonna make a roughly two parts flesh terrors red to one part shyish purple mix. This is gonna give us this gorgeous dark red color. And we're just gonna paint all over the shower, shower, the shoulder pad. <laughs> like that. Color of dried blood, as it's often described in the novels. And next up, typically, the word bearers have a silver trim. However, this one's gonna be quite ostentatious because we wanna tie that into Constantin Valdor himself. Now, the color we're gonna be using instead of silver is in fact a gold, and it's gonna be Retributor Armor. We're just gonna get this over the top of the trim. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're then gonna do is use some Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm gonna use this to shade that gold trim. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Waz Daka Red. I'm going to use this to highlight the edges on our red armor. And 
just like this. And with that done, we then take some Canoptic Alloy and we use that to edge highlight the gold trim. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna take a tiny bit of Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm gonna add this as a little spot highlight on the rent in the shoulder pan, just like this. Just so it catches the eye, it catches the light. And so with that base complete, Constantin Valdor is now finished. The Mac Daddy of the Custodes himself. Well, discounting the Emperor, of course. He's an absolutely gorgeous model, but he is very, very detailed. I believe the term is often used extra. I don't be how to describe Valdor. Um, really, really fun. I've had him on my desk for a while, and it was great to finally get him done. Now to, well, lead my Custodes army into a bright golden future. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.